Hi, uh, my name is Peter Mischer, and my company is called Fingertips Lab. And our first device is called O6. It doesn't show up. So O6 is a new way of tracking mobile applications. As a background, today the industry has largely emphasized the design of devices that need visual interaction, such as iPhones, smartwatches, and virtual reality headsets. And these interactions work great uh, when you're at home or office, but they completely break down when you step outside. Uh, while walking on the streets, you see people looking down at smartphones. Uh, Seven out of ten people do that. And uh, a lot of drivers uh, use smartphones for driving. Uh, according to the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration, there are approximately 660,000 drivers at this very second handling smartphones while driving. And this predominantly happens because voice commands, the predominant eye screen interaction does not work. It's not that um, voice commands are unreliable in noisy environments, or that each interaction takes place, takes about three to five seconds for it to happen. But even in voice commands such as Apple, Siri, uh, uh, Cortana, or uh, Google Now, are perfect, they're only good for asking questions or setting timers. 95% of the uh, times, we are not interacting with computers to ask questions to setting timers. We are interacting with computers to browse, to keep up with information group check emails, Facebook posts, and so on. So we build, uh, so we build a new way of interacting with mobile applications. This is where you can use, where you can interact with mobile applications without looking at or touching the screen. Uh, the device is called O6. O6 consists of two parts, uh, a tactile, haptic, and a gesture sensor uh, controller that needs no visual attention to operate and you can use that to remotely control any mobile application. The second half is a mobile app that converts all the stuff you love to read in mobile apps into interactive radio stations. So let me show you how it works. Before I show you how it works though, uh, you can use O6 on your steering wheel, you can mount it, and you can listen to Facebook, Twitter, Slack, News, Evernote, what have you. You just need to press a button to tune into the radio station. You can use it, you can flip it on your body, uh, with skateboarding, for instance, or you can wear it as a watch, or you can use it as a remote for home automation devices such as Netflix, music controller, and so on. So this is the O6 app. I'm ready. On June 2032. So I'm going to use this controller. On April 2024. I'm ready. On April 5, 2016, at 10:24 a.m. I can pause it. Email. Or I can go change my channel. Twitter. I can press the button. Should work. Yeah. One. At 7.15 p.m. Two. At 7.15 p.m. And it's very attractive, so if I don't like this tweet, I can go to the next one. I can quickly go back. Twitter. Go back to email. Tweet from. Four. At 7.15 p.m. Two. Twitter. Twitter. Go back. Twitter. 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 Email. On April 5th, 2016. So what, what, what O6 supports, an action button, and what this action button does, it uses artificial intelligence to analyze the content you're listening to and extract the most intended actions. For instance, in this email, it found uh, that there's a question being asked. So you can choose reply. If you press the button, you can see certain canned replies. Found a phone number, it found an address. It's automatically going to drop those actions so you can rotate the dial over here and select whichever action you want to take, so you use deep linking to automatically start it. So this is the basic mode. The advanced mode is, um, is, a, is a mode that we invented for uh, blind people um, uh, to attract mobile applications. So the way it works is pretty sophisticated for an advanced user. I can press the button. I can open Facebook, and here I can remotely control any app without looking or touching the screen. I can scroll really fast. And then I push the action button and analyze that you're listening to Facebook. You can go like, hit like, and then you can go back, select, to go back home. So this already works with millions of apps already, it's the second mode. So O6 was initially created three years back to enable blind children in India to use mobile applications. 
Devices such as iPhone, most of the mobile apps are designed for visual interaction, and because these devices are so expensive and all apps are designed for visual interaction, it's simply not possible for the blind children to interact with these apps. What we have done is now 50 blind children can use these tactile haptic devices to share a phone and use mobile applications. And fast, for a year and a half, we are working with automotive companies to kind of uh, use this device to interact with mobile applications so that when you're driving, when you're on the go, hopefully in the future you're not looking down at the screen to consume the content. You have your eyes free to commute and you can listen to the content and interact with it. Thanks. Sensors are used in the device. Yes, we have a three-axis motion sensor and accelerometer. Uh, we have a haptic motor, and the haptic motor has a haptic motor driver that has 250 programmable haptic effects. So, if you have a weather where it's raining, you get this rain kind of haptic sensation about the motor. Other than that, it's got um, tactile. Everything is tactile. So, it's button clicks, double click, single click, triple click. And we have a rotary dial that has different kind of rotary effects. So if it's, it could be smooth, if it continues to be adjusting, but if it's a discrete, it'll click. Uh, so think of it as a combination of a mechanical watch and a smartwatch. How many apps do you work with today? Uh, our second one already works with millions of iOS apps because we tap into accessibility features. Our advanced, uh, now these apps are designed for visual interaction. So when you drive, when you walk, it's not perfect because you still have to memorize and learn how to interact with the app. And that's why the second mode, we are reinventing from the ground up all these mobile applications as radio stations. For that, we have about four apps that are working. News, podcast, email, and Twitter. And over time, we'll add Slack and Renault for happy. I would think it'd be easier to uh, build an API so that all kinds of apps could um, hook into your metadata so that uh, <coughs> the navigation can happen for, for any startup or any company, right? Absolutely. The question was, uh it would be good to have an API so that other startups, other companies can tap into to motivate their, uh, make their content accessible on the go. Absolutely, that's, that's part of our roadmap as well. How did you treat your device? Uh, this device, uh, we launched a Kickstarter campaign um, last month just to test out if people are interested. So we are planning to ship this device in February 2017, like a year out. So we asked $100,000, we raised about $160,000 in a successful campaign. Right now you can sign up on a website. We will open up pre-orders in September, supporting both iOS and Android. So this other campaign was only for iOS. The device is $99, the app is free. The app has premium content so that, you know, if you have a hyperlink, you can go fetch that link and convert it to audio. You can buy up to 14 additional premium voices as well and you can pay a small amount for unlimited channels. So the app has its own monetization app. So what if you uh, lose one of those things? So oh, you should buy one more. Right. Uh, yeah, so the pocket clip, we have three different accessories. One is a magnetic mount for the steering wheel. The second is a pocket clip that you can clip on. And the third is um, a wrist band. Um, the pocket clip is very secure. In the car, if it drops, hopefully you can catch it. The wristband is pretty secure itself. Uh, if it loses the range for, uh, it, you can set a setting to have an alarm on the phone, and that's the best we can do at this point. One more question. What would be the battery life for, for the device? Yes, seven to ten days. Seven to ten days. Um, if you don't use the happy motor a lot, if you don't get a lot of notifications, it can go up to two weeks, to three weeks. It's uh, rechargeable, so you can place it on a magnetic mount, and it's going to charge itself in about an hour. Yeah. 